Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today we are looking at the Keller's Keep quest pack for Hasbro's 2021 edition of Hero Quest. Now I love Hero Quest, I grew up with it, and when Hasbro announced they were making a new edition, I did say that I was going to add it to my collection. And one of the main drives behind that was just I saw it as a milestone in gaming, the return of an old classic that I loved so much. And I admit I was never sure whether I was going to pick up the expansions for it. But playing Hero Quest again after so long, and now using the US edition of the rules rather than the European rules I grew up with, I very quickly decided I wanted the expansions as well. I can see this getting a lot of table time in my house. I have been thoroughly enjoying my time in the dungeon. But I thought I was going to have to wait a while for these expansions. They are pretty much sold out online everywhere at the moment. But the other day I was in town and I went into my local game store. And for people who don't live in the UK, I don't mean a game store as in a shop that sells games, I mean a store called Game, which is a chain that mainly sells video games. And they had both expansions on the shelf at the recommended retail price of £25. Normally, I wouldn't buy anything at the recommended retail price, but as Modi have been squeezing the margins on HeroQuest, and most places are selling the core game and both expansions at full retail price because it's the only way they can make any profit on it. And besides, to be honest, £25 is a pretty reasonable price for what you are getting in these expansions. Which is just as well because the core game is £100 which feels like a lot. So in this video we're just going to dive into the box and I'm going to share my thoughts on it, give some opinions on whether I think you should pick this expansion up if you already have the core game. Before we go inside the box though, I just wanted to mention the way that the boxes are sealed. As with the core game, the boxes are sealed with tape on all four edges. Furthermore, because I bought this in a retail store, there was a price sticker up here in the corner. I used a hairdryer to melt the glue on all of the tape and the stickers, and everything came off without leaving any marks. I strongly recommend doing that if you're worried about the condition of your boxes, because it is not unheard of for the tape on these boxes to actually peel off the paper coating, and you will damage the artwork. But enough of that, let's dive in. In terms of contents, this is your most important thing. This is your Keller's Keep quest book. This includes 10 new missions which are linked together to form a storyline. And everything else in the box is there to facilitate creating these quests. I'm not going to open this quest book. I'm not going to spoil any of the adventures. I will talk a little bit more about the campaign once we've got through the rest of the components. Next up is a punch board of tokens. You get some stairs. These just go onto the board to make it look like you're going up and down staircases. There is a mysterious symbol here that I'm not going to spoil what that's all about. There is a forge. There is some little handouts that you give the players as they progress through the campaign. Some more walls, some other bits and pieces, and this little cliff edge, which again, I'm not going to spoil. The tokens are pretty much the same quality as in the core set, although they are single sided, they are black on the reverse. It would have been nice, I think, if some of this stuff had been made in plastic for the new edition. The forge, that could have been a nice 3D element and I feel it is a wasted opportunity that it wasn't. But never mind, these tokens are exactly what you got in the original release of the expansion, so it is, I guess, to be expected. Next up, you get a complete set of extra green skin miniatures. So that's abominations, goblins, and orcs. And you will need these because in the missions in this expansion, you get some really big fights. There are certain situations where you may have 12 enemies on the board just in a single room. We're gonna take a quick look at all of the miniatures, but it must be stressed, these are exactly the same miniatures that came in the core set. There are no new sculpts in this expansion. and. I guess that's a bit of a missed opportunity. During the crowdfunding campaign, they did create as stretch goals, one new goblin sculpt, one new orc sculpt, and one new abomination sculpt. And I guess it would have been nice to have included those in the expansions. Although of course I realized that those were benefits for crowdfunding at the time. Those were the incentive for people to put down their money in advance. So it does make sense that they weren't included, but I guess it would have been nice. Nevertheless, you get six goblins total in three different designs. You have this one, this one, who's a bit of a swashbuckler, and then my favorite of the bunch. You get eight orcs in four different designs. This one with the double-handed battle axe. This one with the big sword that I always use for the named orcs. And then you get two female orc designs as well. This one, and this one. Finally, you get three more abominations. 
You do get some new plastic in the box though. You get two new doors. These are reinforced doors and they represent entrances and exits from the different levels because you aren't always going downstairs into dungeons in this particular expansion. And these are really nice. I love the detail on these. Finally, you get a deck of 14 new cards. You get four items that you can purchase in the store and the rest are artifacts you find in your missions. And I am going to spoil these in the video. I'm going to show you all of the cards, mainly because not only can you use them in the missions included in the expansion, but you can also use them in your homebrew adventures. So I think it is a worthwhile thing to know what new cards you are getting with the expansion to see if you can make use of them in adventures you design yourself. If you don't want to see the cards, look at the timestamps in the video description below and skip ahead accordingly. The new equipment cards that you can buy in stores are all potions. You get the potion of battle that you can drink to reroll your attack dice, and that costs 200 gold. The potion of dexterity, which allows you to add five movement squares to your movement dice roll, and that costs 100 gold. A potion of restoration, which restores one lost body point and one lost mind point, because mind points are more of a factor in this expansion as well, and that costs 500 gold. And then you have the Venom Antidote, which restores two body points of damage caused by poison needles or poison darts. And that costs 300 gold. Moving on to the artifacts, you get a fire ring, which will protect you from two dread fire spells. Once you've used it twice, it's discarded. And then you get a magical throwing dagger, which you can throw to automatically inflict one wound on a monster you can see. All of the other artifacts are spell scrolls. And these are interesting for two reasons. One, every time you find a scroll, the mission will not tell you exactly what you found. You're supposed to shuffle this deck of spell scrolls and draw one at random. Secondly, because they're spell scrolls, anybody can use them, not just the wizard and the elf, which means finally characters like the barbarian can hurl a fireball at the enemy. The spells in question are Heal Body, Tempest, Ball of Flame, Courage, Fire of Wrath, Sleep, Rock Skin, Genie. It's worth noting that versions of these cards were included with the Keller's Keep expansion released back in the 90s. But back then they were printed on the actual quest book and you had to cut them out or photocopy them. This time round, we have the physical cards. But as with everything else in this game that you can find, the intention really is you write what you have on your character sheet and the cards aren't used. And that means when you are randomly allocating spell scrolls from that spell deck, you may get the same spell more than once and there is nothing to prevent the heroes from purchasing multiple copies of those potions. That's it in terms of the components you get in this expansion, and like I said, I think for £25 that's pretty reasonable. You're getting 17 enemy miniatures, yes they are just the same ones as you get in the core set, but more of a green horde is always good. You get the two plastic dungeon doors, you get the sheet of cardboard tiles, 14 game cards, and then the 10 part quest. And the 10 part quest is an important part of this and all of the components included are designed for use with that quest. But of course you can also use all of this stuff to make your own homebrew adventures. Having more magical artifacts you can find, particularly those spell scrolls, which I think are quite interesting because they give non-magic users the chance to cast some spells is always a good thing. But the quest itself is actually really good. The storyline is the king is trapped at Keller's keep and the heroes are racing to get to him. They have to find four pieces of a map that's going to guide them to where the king is, and then they have to get him out before he finally succumbs to the forces of dread. So it's a pretty exciting race against time type story, and it has some really interesting missions. There are a few really nice set pieces. I'm not going to tell you what they are because I think they are the kind of things that you want to experience them firsthand. You want that moment where your dungeon master, where Morkar, or I should say Zargon, suddenly says, ha ha, now this happens. And you have that moment of panic as you have to rethink what you're going to do. But there are several situations like that. Some of them are really memorable. And I would say that of the two expansions, Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord, Keller's Keep is the better of the two. And I'm not just saying that because I really like greenskins, because growing up, I had Warhammer Fantasy Battle Armies for greenskins and also Undead, so both of these expansions really speak to me. But ultimately, I think if you're only going to get one expansion, I would get Keller's Keep. Keller's Keep is the one you're supposed to play immediately after the core game anyway. It goes core game, Keller's Keep, then Return of the Witch Lord. Although there's nothing really forcing you to play them in that order. And I think that about covers it. £25 gets you a whole new quest to explore, some new items, some new miniatures to slap some paint on, and some really memorable set pieces. 
The downsides to this mission pack are I think the same downsides that were always there when it was released back in the 90s. You're fighting against exactly the same enemies. It's goblins, orcs and abominations. You may, at the point you play Keller's Keep, be getting fed up of seeing those same enemies over and over again. And while the game does include those exciting set pieces, they may not be enough to offset the fact that most of the time you're seeing the same things. And of course, it is disappointing that you are getting exactly the same miniatures again. If you don't like painting the same miniatures all the time, which I definitely don't, it might be considered a little bit tiresome to have another whole set of the core game greenskins. But other than that, if you love HeroQuest and you want more HeroQuest, here's more HeroQuest. And I guess that's all I've got to say about that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon.